Hello everyone, Martin here, back with another Legacy video. Still playing the Mark Tobias inspired 4 color Doomsday combo control deck. Um, made a couple of tweaks, uh, removed, I think the most significant one is that I removed a the one copy of Preordain I've been playing, which initially replaced the one copy of Knight's Whisper that Mark was playing. Um, and I added a Sheldog Isle. This might seem sort of a out of left field kind of decision, but the reasoning behind it for me was, I think with the with the uptick in four color and five color beanstalk control decks, especially the ones that are splashing white, I don't think we can reliably grind with the one ring because of leyline binding. Um, so I think we do need to tr kind of try and rely on a fast doomsday, and for that. Against the control deck, I, I want Sheldog Island Emrakul. So why not have Sheldog Island in the sideboard, you may ask? And that is a, a legitimate question. But I was really, really sort of squeezed for one sideboard slot. I really needed one more sideboard slot. And I just thought that... Um, and this goes back to a conversation I, I once had with uh, Marcus Ival, uh, the, uh, the High Tide and, and Miracles Master... Um, who also have played a, a quite a bit of Doomsday, and who suggested that Shellog Isle is just, just like, it's just a reasonable card, um, and may even be reasonable enough to have in your main deck. Obviously, there are some costs, but this is not replacing a land, this is a, a 16th land. So having that versus, like, Wasteland Strategies is not the worst, like having just access to an extra land. But also, like, if you play this game one, and you and you hide away, like, say, a, a Teferi or a Force of Will, or even just a Cantrip, um, it's, that's pretty reasonable to then have sort of stowed away for when you resolve Doomsday at, at a later point. Um, so that's, uh, that's my reasoning for that, or even like a One Ring or something. Um, also, like, in really, really grindy games... Um, it's not impossible for you to get to 20 or fewer cards without resolving Doomsday. Just saying. So anyways, with regards to the sideboard, um, yeah, I wanted four creatures. So two Shieldred and two Bowmasters is what I'm going with. You could make reasonable arguments for uh, anything like uh, Oppo Agent, Opposition Agent to uh, Dothy Voidwalker, over to whatever. Uh, Heck, even Sedgemore Witch, I don't know. But these are the four I went with. Because I want to be able to semi-board out of, of the Doomsday package versus Tempo. So versus Tempo, I'll board out a couple of copies of Doomsday. And then I just, I feel like if you only have two or even three creatures, it's a little bit light on actual factual win conditions. Um, I also, I was playing one Dismember for a while, but I just think, especially in, in MTGO leagues, there are going to be... A saturation of Magus of the Moon decks like uh, Boros Initiative and Moon Stompy, and I really want to, because that Magus of the Moon is one of the worst, like one of the scariest cards for this deck. I would ideally like to find another sideboard slot at least, <laughs> but I don't have one. But like, I could see an argument for three carpets. I could definitely see an argument for two Force of Negation. Um, yeah, that's probably it. So, I think. That's all I want to say, so let's go jump into a league. Righto, on the play for round number one. I'll keep this hand. Um, I think I'm going to underground C, ponder, and then most likely play pedal, because that way I have veil off of pedal, and I can back it up with days, which is a pretty nice thing. Oh yeah, actually, I forgot, completely forgot. One thing I forgot to mention is I have swapped the lands here. So I actually wanted to try um, one bayou, and one Trop, and then instead of one Scrubland, one Tundra, I've gone with two Scrublands, and that has forced me to change the Flood of Strands to Misty Rainforests. But this is uh, something I was talking to uh, a fellow Doomsday uh, uh, friend with, and I think it's really... It, it's quite difficult for me to, con to, to, to come up with too many arguments one way or the other. I think like with two Trops, you have a higher saturation of or higher uh likelihood of being able to veil with days back up on the same turn um 
and obviously the Lauren reveals can now only find one green source, whereas before they could only find two or one white source, and I've swapped that around. And yeah. Anyway, just wanted to, to briefly mention that. Okay, so let's uh let's ponder. Ooh, we find some lands. That's pretty much all I all I could uh, want or hope for. Um, I think I want all of these cards. I'm gonna take the tundra. Oh, yeah, I misclicked there. I was gonna take the tundra. It doesn't matter too much. Play the the veil. Really, don't, or the the petal here. Really don't want to get my one ring discarded. That's sort of my biggest concern here. So this is ugh. guessing this is like oops all spells or something. But why would they? Why would they like? shock this in if if they aren't making a play. I don't think that really makes sense unless they are uh unless it's a deck that wants this green mana. Well, guess not. Maybe they have veil themselves and want to be able to veil yeah, I don't know. But if this is like oops all spells, I feel a little bit in trouble. I don't think oops all spells play what is this? Metal craft or yeah. I don't know. All right, so I'm I have a land on top. Um, no, another brainstorm. I mean, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna fire this brainstorm now. We have the one ring next turn. Um, so we need the tundra to make make the ring here. It's also a little bit tempting to play to fairy next turn and just have that under me. There's no real point in bouncing Mox Opal. They can just replay it. But but yeah. All right, so let's put back a Lorien Revealed and Second Brainstorm, I think. Not sure if I'm going to be needing this Veil at all. If this is like some kind of green Stompy deck, then obviously not. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused. I'm going to hang on to the Veil, though. Um, yeah, let's... Um, I'm going to fetch Bayou here. Be somewhat close to casting Doomsday. Okay, so I think I'm going to fire the One Ring here. I do feel a little bit vulnerable if this is some kind of gung-ho combo deck we're up against. We shall see. Could also be. It could be anything, really. I I don't know what this is signifying. Um, gonna ring now if I find veil or veil again. I say veil. I meant petal. Uh, maybe that is actually a reason to also street wraith. Now, yeah, I think so. Oh, dark ritual. Okay. Well, if we find a doomsday, we're just firing in all sorts of ways. So if this, oh LED. LED is not in oops all spells, but LED is certainly in, in only in combo decks. I want to say, what is this? Oh, but there is Doomsday. I mean, I think we just we just go for it here, right? So let's. Uh, they don't even have Metalcraft, so they like they only have access to one green mana right now, that we know of, anyways. So we still have our land drop. We're gonna draw two cards with the uh, with the ring. It we need uh, access to Thassa and a blue mana, so we could just make it cavern. Ideally, okay, never mind. They concede. I was gonna say ideally, I would like like a force of will if for some reason they would have some way of interacting with us. But yeah, okay. So some sort of combo deck, probably some sort of storm deck. We want force of negation. Um, maybe we want, do we want something like Bowmasters just to be able to play a little bit of a different game and get them, get some pressure going? They might not be drawing any cards as such. We want to hedge and bring in like, I don't know, like a dismember or something in case they, I guess, I guess then it's, it's better to bring in plow. I don't think it's a moon stompy deck. I mean to hedge against something like a creature. If if they are a creature deck of some sort, I'm gonna at least trim one veil, which is maybe folly if it is a, a tendril storm deck. But I yeah I don't know. I'm gonna cut a Teferi as well. I'm gonna cut a Lauren revealed. I don't expect my mana to come under any serious pressure. And then probably I'll cut um one street wraith. Yeah. So. If we knew more about what we were up against, we could either like cut all copies of Veil or something, or maybe the Teferi, I don't know. Um, this hand doesn't have Force of Will, so we're sort of dead to any turn one shenanigans, but other than that, it's pretty decent. Opponent Mulligan's to six. I think I'm going to keep this. 
especially when they mulligan. That sort of decreases the chances that they can go off on turn one. But, well, LED. It's a good way to start. Agadim, uh-oh. So they are just going off, yikes. And Tomb, really? Interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I've seen this deck. I played against it before, the Entomb uh, for e Echo. Well, I mean, can't do anything about that. <laughs> well, we just, they just got seven, so they can likely do more stuff here. If they can discard us, that's good for them. But if not, then we, they just uh, wheeled us into a win here. Well, we shall see. I saw Empty the Warrens here. I would love if they just make like a big Empty the Warrens or a big, uh, what's it called? Uh, galvanic relay. Uh oh, this doesn't feel like any of those things. Carpet. Holy smokes. Okay, is this a pass the turn? It is. Okay. Well, what's imprinted here? Black mana. So they can um, they can sit if they're sitting on a surgical extraction or a mind break trap. That's those are the or if for some reason they're a force of will deck, but I I don't think that's that's the case. Otherwise, they are. If there was going to be a game three, I would bring in all my Veil of Summers, or the, the one I cut, <laughs> all my Veil of Summers. Um, okay, so this is the same turn wind pile. Consider LED both of my cyclers. Glad I didn't cut two of those. And then Thassa. So we put Thassa on the bottom with a cycler on top. Then the order of the remaining three cards doesn't really matter. Cast the brainstorm, put back a blank, and then consider on top. LED cycle, maintain priority, crack LED for blue. And we will cast consider, putting the Teferi into the graveyard, drawing the Street Wraith. Okay, and they've seen enough. All right, off to winning start. On the play once again, round number two. Gonna keep this. Um, and I think I just ponder on turn one. I was thinking uh, a little while ago if this if this deck really needs the basic island because it would be kind of nice to maybe have an, an additional duel to have like a two trop two tundra and then one bayou like uh, instead of one trop one bayou. But um, I think because I think like most of the time like right now I I think I feel like I'm disincentiv disincentivized from like fetching basic island here because then the wasteland just takes me off like a color and it, it feels pretty likely that I'm going to be playing this this game on non-basics anyways in most games but there is one spot where I really really feel like the basic island is very valuable oh nice um, and that is when you um, that is when you doomsday and have a fetch land and want to like put a land into the pile and your opponent is is or could be a wasteland deck. I feel like that's where you really get paid out for your. Uh... Uh oh, is this Chalice? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna daze this. Hope they don't have Spirit Guide. And if they do, what do I do? Um, okay, they didn't. Fortunately. Okay, I'm gonna put down the the Misty here because I feel like probably I don't want the Basic Island. Although you know, Chalice and City of Traders usually. Where they go, so goes Blood Moon, I suppose. Name Sticker Goblin. I'm definitely countering this. The only question is, do I daze this? Or do I force it? They didn't have the... They didn't have the thing before. The Spirit Guide. I think I'm actually going to Brainstorm here. I do risk getting Brainstorm locked. And if they have Spirit Guide and I don't have an, hit another blue card, then it's pretty bad. Okay, so hang on. Here we can... Force of Will pitching to Fairy, and then we can untap Doomsday. I think I like that. And with that being the case, I suppose I don't hate having Thassa in the hand. That's like another card we can put into the pile. Alternatively, I could have another land. No, I don't think I'll be needing another land, but we shall see. Okay, I'm going to force this, and I'm going to pitch to Fairy rather than pitching Days, because I think Days might actually like be relevant next turn whereas uh the, the teferi isn't going to be uh on this turn anyways okay so i'm gonna 
I'm going to just see if I can get uh, through the pile. I don't expect them to have removal, but you never know. So let's say if it involves a consider and some street wraiths and then cavern of souls. So let's say we ca we draw consider, we cast it, we put a street wraith into the graveyard and then draw a second street wraith, wraithing into edge, edging into cavern. That gets messed up by a chalice here. Or at least it just it postpones things for a turn, so but I think that's okay. We lose straight out lose to a Magus of the Moon, but I wouldn't expect that to be in the in the deck, uh in the main deck. So but we shall see. Alternatively we don't bother with Street Wraith or with Consider and just assume they can't cast a removal spell. And if that were the case, then we could have just like left a card in the deck and then won. Okay, they were back up to three mana here. Let's see what they what they have for us. Yeah, Goblin Matron, you got it. And they get another name sticker goblin. Who is not going to be called into action. Put it into the graveyard. And cycle the edge. Draw the cavern. And Bob's your sister. Alright, cool. So for this uh matchup we ha the, we have the dismembers for sure. I think the um, Boseju is reasonable, just as a ploy to, to kill a Chalice. We may want like a third creature removal spell, although I don't think, like, except for the Magi of the Moon, this isn't a matchup where, like, killing one-for-one -one creatures. Um, but, you know, if they go Magus of the Moon and we have access to white mana, we can float white and, and kill it. I think probably, oops, I just clicked that in. Probably we want probably we want the force of negation for the chalice, but it doesn't hit anything else really. I don't think um, we don't need the veil veils of summer. They can go. I mean, Teferi is is in a pinch a removal spell, but I don't think we I don't think we need it. I don't think it's good enough. It's kind of can be kind of good with the one ring, and like it can bounce the one ring and then prolong the game that way. But I think, yeah, just having the one is probably fine. I'm not sure how comfortable I am just going Hell for Leather versus this deck if I were to get a same, a same turn sort of win uh, presented to me. Because they are likely to have like pyro like Pyroblasts or my Brick Traps or something post-board. We shall see. Um, yeah, this, uh, this hand is certainly acceptable. Tundra, a little bit of an eyesore here with the Doomsday and the Petal, but, um... Okay, opponent mulligans to six. I'm gonna keep... Mulligans to five. Rough. Did they find five they like? I think they can... They can reasonably, like, win off of five cards, uh, for sure. I guess any, that's probably true of any... any matchup, any deck, but, um... But, like, Cavern of Souls is worth, like, more than one card sometimes, because it kind of means my Force of Will is... Not in my hand, uh, almost, if you if you get my meaning. So, like, Cavern of Souls plus, like, Spirit Guides or whatever. Well, there's the cavern. Um, okay, name's Goblin. I'm, I'm less concerned than if it had named Human. Um, I'm going to cycle, I think, the Street Wraith. Not loving that, though. <laughs> well, that, of course, was going to happen. Okay, okay. They didn't chalice for zero last game, or last turn. And they can't, like, get something uncounterably through that makes my spells cost more mana. So I'm going to pass here. And I'm a little bit, like, less than enthused about being at 16 life already. Because this is, that is the name of the game for, for goblins. It is, like, deal fast damage. Goblin, two mana goblin. Battle cry goblin, okay. Of all the goblins in all the towns. All right, I'm going to... I am going to brainstorm here. If I find a land, I have a same turn win. Um, hamana, hamana. Am I even able to, like, am I able to do this protected? So let's say we put back uh, this member and Dark Ritual, then we draw Dark Ritual. And then we, we have one, two, three, four. We have six mana with Dark Ritual. So we, Dark Ritual Doomsday, so we have three blue mana remaining and we brainstorm into 
we brainstorm into Edge of Autumn Street Wraith blue card. And then we just cycle into the blue. We, we put one of the cyclers and the blue card back. We cycle into the blue card. We have Force back up and put Thos on the stack in case they they have something nasty in their three cards. I think we do that. So, like, a Mindbreak Trap is going to be live on this Doomsday because we are having to cast Petal first. Something like Surgical on my Brainstorm right now would actually be incredibly annoying. All right, Petal resolved after some amount of thinking. Do you have Mindbreak Trap? Would not appear so. Okay, so Edge of Autumn. Let's just make it consider. And then two Cyclers. And I guess, like, Cavern of Souls. Doesn't matter. We're not going to draw it. Um, I guess we also don't need three Cyclers that, then. But I think having the Cyclers, having this exact pile, is pretty reasonable in case they do Surgical and, and like, mess up our pile. Because that, like, ha adds some redundancy, having the uh, the extra Cycler and the Consider. Okay, so Cavern on the bottom... Cycler, and then these three cards are what I'm going to draw with my Brainstorm. Okay, so I think I'm going to put back, actually, the the two petals. So that I always, I always have the... Um, eh, yeah, so I always have the Force of Will. I mean, obviously, if they have two things here that I have to worry about, like, it would have to be, I guess, two Mind Break Traps, or Mind Break Trap plus Surgical. The Surgical now doesn't matter, but it would have mattered. Yeah, we'll see. They are pausing on, like, everything here. I, I feel like they probably have something, but I don't know. Could have, like, pyrokinesis here as removal. Okay. Oracle's in. They did have pyrokinesis. That's actually really interesting. I wasn't expecting this card to be in their deck post-board. Let's see if they also have a Mind Break Trap as their last card. All right, they didn't. Cool, cool. Um... Well, 2-0, oh, let's go for round number three. Round number three, on the play once more. That's three in the spin, on the spin here. Up against a, a, a player whose username is a miracle. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expect them to live up to that name and have, like, miracle cards, or I'll be disappointed. I'm going to keep this a little bit wonky, weird hand, and I'm going to lead with Sheldog Isle, make my opponent question what format they signed up to play here. And let's see. Okay, I will choose a Force of Will. And let's see if I get wastelanded here. Yep, all right. Well, we have more lands. Doomsday, right on. Oh, uh, maybe I'm, sp I'm supposed to play the, the Delta there for sure. If I get, like, griefed or thoughtsies now, uh, I only have myself to blame. Oh, again, looks like that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, I think I ponder here. And... I think I take the f Force of Will. Yeah, let's take the Force of Will. And then next turn, we, we draw the Lorne Revealed and we Island Cycle it and play out probably Underground Sea. And I keep my Polluted Delta uncracked. This smells like uh, that Bug Beanstalk deck that plays Stifle and Daze as well, so we have to be mindful of that. If we're lucky, they just, like... Flash and Bowmasters here. And we can daze that. And then if we're really lucky, they force of will this. And we have Veil. Yeah, this definitely feels like like Beanstalk. I was going to say, I would love to draw a blue card. I didn't. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about a second Bowmasters here. Okay, there was none. Maybe they're worried about uh, daze number two. Um, I think, first of all, I think they play Daze. I also think they have a Stifle. So I might just test the water here and fetch on their turn. Another Bowmasters. Bowmasters is kind of a problem with these, the One Rings. What if I, like, I can, I have two draws here. I can cast Veil and then I can cycle Edge to find the, the blue card. But cycling Edge is, is that's a, at a high cost. I'm going to fetch here, see if they have the Stifle, first of all. It's going to thin my deck, and I'm going to... And I'm going to Veil of Summer, yeah. If they force this, 
then yeah, I don't know. At least it's a it's a hint to Torak. Let's just see here. If this just resolves, they they can't ping me now because of Veil. So if this just resolves, they have um they can beat me down to seventeen. Then I untap, I doomsday down to to eight, and I can draw seven cards and not die. Um, so that should be fine. I think I'm going to let this resolve and then hope to not get wastelanded next turn. Yeah, yeah, you ping yourself. It did smell like they had a force of will, though, like they were pausing for so long, so you kind of expect that. Oh, bummer. They do have the wasteland. Do I cycle this edge? Cycling edge? Yeah, I think I cycle edge because... Um, I think now the game may pivot onto me trying to resolve one ring. <sighs> I forgot. I have to take my medicine here off the Bowmasters. Yeah, I think it is rather hard to beat this resolve Bowmasters, but I don't know. We shall see. What's this? Beanstalk. Okay. Love to draw on land. Oh, just drawing... Yeah, this is what you don't want when you're playing all... Like, this is what you're afraid of when you're playing this many sort of bombs. Like, this is shit. Like, five of these. Um, I think I'm going to I'm gonna ship it here. And then hope to find at least another land or a uh, blue card for my Force of Will. Um, meanwhile, they're, they're sitting comfortable on six cards and probably with a Force of Will. Um, hmm. So Lotus Petal means we're going to be pretty far away from casting Doomsday if we spew this on A, the One Ring. There's also a world where we just concede here and don't show them the One Ring. Uh, I think I actually like that, as crazy as that may seem. I don't think we're winning this game. I think it's pretty clear they have a Force of Will. Uh, that's my read anyways. So, And tapping Doomsday, or tapping out for the One Ring also plays right into Days. And even resolving the One Ring isn't that great because of the Bowmasters. Uh, okay. So, against this deck, I kind of like to sideboard as if it were against a, like a tempo deck, because I kind of think it is a tempo deck, honestly. So, that being the case, I kind of want all of these removal spells and anti-tempo cards. I want to cut all the artifact mana, and I want to cut... Uh, all the cyclers and all the sort of fast doomsday elements. Cut co two copies of doomsday. Cut the consider, and then the last two cuts are always the toughest. Um, probably like a Teferi against the bow mat uh, bow master uh, deck, and then mm, I think maybe a force of will. That might be crazy. Yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting hand. I'm going to force check them with the, the Carpet of Flowers here. I am going to get by you here. It means they know they don't have to worry about days. But I think if this carpet gets forced, I would rather... Like, I already have a lot of blue. I would rather have access to one more black. Okay, so carpet is in. They play a bayou. Expertly playing around my, my carpet. I draw a ponder. So now I have to decide between, like, getting to Fairy... Or, sh sorry, Sheldog Isle... Uh, sort of up and running or pondering. I think I think I'm gonna tiff uh Sheldock. And I think I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put Teferi there. I already have a Teferi. Um I'd rather have these Veils of Summer sort of still be in play throughout the game and like like casting a Teferi out through a like a Sheldock Isle, that's it's pretty pretty awesome. Okay, so now they can bowmaster. We have Force of Will I think I'm going to. I probably cast um, ponder here. This may incentivize them to bowmaster. Okay, they didn't. Uh, I really like the shoulder backed up by double force, so I'm just going to put. Oh no! Ah, oh, that was so bad. I put shoulder on the bottom. Damn. Uh, I'm still not going to shuffle. I want the shoulder. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pass. You'd assume eventually they're going to make a play that requires blue mana, so eventually my carpet is going to gonna get paid off here. Yep, there's mana. And there's a beanstalk, sure. So I think I'm actually going to 
I am going to cast a fairy now. I'm going to float white. Uh, and if they have force, they're certainly going to force this. That will draw them a card. So it's like just a, a one for one trade here. And then we get to decide if we want to force back before they draw with uh, the beanstalk. The good thing about f like having to fairy versus their deck is all like the, the remaining three force of wills are going to be kind of locked out. Um, I think I probably, I don't know, may maybe Teferi isn't that important. Yeah, I think I'm just going to let them counter Teferi. Um, Teferi is great and all, but they're also a Bowmaster deck, and we have the Shouldered coming down. I would probably rather be able to, like, especially if we can find a Force, uh, another blue card, yeah, yeah whatever. Just tell the eagerness. It's, it's almost like they've felt like Collector of... Yeah, that's fine. It's almost as, as if your opponents feel like they're getting a two-for-one if they're Shell Dog Isle, like wasting Shell Dog Isle, because the card underneath. And that's just not true. But obviously, if you if you hit something like, like your Oracle or something, then maybe the opportunity cost of not doing it is just too high. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to float... Uh, blue, I think. And then I'm going to cast Shouldred. And if they force this, I'm, I'm certainly fighting back. The only question is, do I brainstorm first to, to try and find another card to pair with the second Force of Will? Actually, I think I'm going to I'm gonna try and show them Veil here. Hopefully they don't have another Force of Will. This brainstorm, yeah. Get them while, while the getting's good. She is in. Well, let's hope they can't, uh, they don't have removal. They could ha certainly have, like, I don't know, uh, Shouldred's Edict, which would be very ironic uh, for uh, the old Shouldred. So what's this? This is four mana. So maybe Merktide. Oh, Ponder, yes. Yes. Ponder, my child, into Shouldred's Wrath. Another Beanstalk, yes. Even better. I mean, I'm being all, like, uh, sort of taunting here, but if they find removal, obviously it's, it's going to be a problem. But they don't have a lot of time to do it. Uh, and I even get to, like, just gain a gazillion life. Or I, I get to keep up double force, which is maybe better. Let's attack here. Yeah, get rid of that. Um, so I think I am going to, I'm going to, uh, yeah, let's make some blue mana. I'm, I am going to cast a brainstorm here. Well, we don't find the second brainstorm, but we do find like several removal spells. So let's, uh. Let's hope this is going to be good enough. Well, I do feel kind of silly now, because if they do find removal plus counterspell, I just, uh, maybe I just gave up the ghost here. A bounce spell like uh, Brazen Borrow or whatever is going to, that's, that's going to be absolutely fine, because we have... Oh, wow, okay. They're almost dead now. They can't force a f will anymore, because they'll be, <laughs> they'll draw two cards. Okay, they can see, sweet. So, I don't know if anything changes here on the draw, if we'd rather have a f another Force of Will rather than another Daze. Maybe that's true. I mean, Daze certainly does get worse on the, on the draw. Uh, wouldn't hate having th all three copies of Teferi, though. Yeah, maybe like Teferi over second Daze. We're sitting at exactly 20 blue cards, though, which is a little bit low. All right, I'm going to keep this. Uh, opponent keeps seven as well. And what do they have here? Ponder, sure. So I kind of want to ponder on my turn one here, but that does play into Bowmaster backed up with Days. I don't think this, this, if this deck plays like, I don't know, more than one days, it's probably no more than two, but I, I could be wrong. We've not even seen a days so far. I've just been cowardly playing around it the whole time. Um, 
So I am going to ponder. I really like the cavern. Like, really, really, really. But I don't really like the rest of the cards. But we do have um, Lorien revealed to to work with here as a shuffler. So I, I might... I didn't. I don't hate the brainstorm that's on top of the deck, but okay. There's no bowmaster in our in, in our future though, so that's fine. They shuffle. Ooh, missing their land drop. That's really interesting. I'm gonna draw here. Um, I draw the brainstorm, and I think I probably do. I brainstorm first, and then like like uh. Yeah, I think I do brainstorm first. I'm not gonna play in today's if I don't have to. <clears throat> okay, I think three force of will is probably one too many. Them stumbling on the lands here, I really kind of dig this to fairy. I think maybe I put back one brainstorm here, and then I'm gonna lure in revealed uh, on their turn probably. We'll see what happens, but third ponder. See if they can hit their second land drop here. They are really a bit, unfortunately, struggling with that. They shuffle. Are they having to move to discard here? That'd be sick. <clears throat> it looks like they are. Wow. That's unfortunate. For them, though, not so much for me. Okay, I'm going to island cycle and get um, get a tropical island here. And then I'm going to draw... Or rather, I'm going to let them discard their roof. I think I could Teferi here, but I think I'd rather, I would actually rather brainstorm and see if I can get, like, hit some business. Uh, don't, but that's probably okay. Okay, I'm going to put back one fetch land just in case they, they stifle me here. Or they would be sitting on two stifles. Okay, they found their second land. Okay, I'm going to fetch uh, getting Bayou, probably. Or is it second Tundra? Yeah, it might be second Tundra. Like, I'd rather not be taken off white. Uh, Oracle, okay, that can be pitched. Okay, I'm going to play Teferi here. If they Bowmaster in response, I'm going to let it resolve. And then if Teferi resolves, I'm going to bounce. I'm going to uh, dismember the Bowmaster. Uh, and then I'm going to bounce the orc army. I'm assuming they have like a handful of at least some counter spells. No fear into the uh the veil that I am. Yeah. I'm going to force pitch to fairy. They don't have veil. That would be crushing. Okay, so that happened. Do they have something else? Kind of expecting bowmasters like you'd think they have a bunch of good spells in their hand. I just noticed I'm actually just on one black source right now. Second force. Okay, I'm gonna force back. It's gonna cost me my ability to doomsday, at least with Thassa's Oracle as a win condition. That was Sauron's Ransom. That was their sort of card advantage engine. Okay, Teferi's in. I'm gonna plus so they don't like top deck a, uh, a, a Bowmasters and, uh, and just kill him. Okay, so they found their Wasteland. They take me off green. That sucks if I draw like a... Uh, what you call it? Uh, like carpet. Okay, there is Bowmasters, so Teferi's going to take one. I'm then going to dismember the Bowmasters, like I just said before. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just save the uh, save the the cavern here. Keep it in my hand. And I think I will value my life total. This, of course, is a little bit annoying if I end up, like, if the minus Teferi uh, activation draws me something I want to play here. Uh, but I'm going to dismember. I'm going to pay black. And, oh no, hang on. How does this work? I can never, I can never do this correctly. Okay, hang on. So, cast dismember. Choose target creature. Bowmaster. Okay. Do I just pay the iron price, pay pay the full full three mana here? I think that's probably okay, actually. Bowmaster is is dead. Bouncing the orc army. And 
Oh, that was good. If they don't uh, present anything crazy here, I just get to draw three cards next turn. They are paying, spell, uh, paying mana for spells here, so probably Murktide. Yeah, so that's in. Okay. I think, um, I think I'm going to plus to fairy and then uh, reveal, lore and reveal on their turn. I don't think I can draw anything here that like being tapped out is going to make a difference. I'm obviously going to do this before Teferi dies. I do expect them to be attacking him. Yeah. All right. So let's fetch. Get underground C. Going to cast and hope not to whiff here. Need to find an answer to the Murktide. Um, yeah, those cards are, are fine. Especially if I can find like a Shouldred. I'd love to find Carpet. Oh, Dark Ritual. That's also good. Um, so I think I do play out the Cavern here. And name a Praetor. And then I think I'm going to tap it and cast the One Ring. How many Bowmasters are gone? Just one. So they could have another one. Um, let's draw. Oh, I draw Bowmasters. That's nice. Mostly because it answers their Bowmasters, but I do also need, I need to now find a, an answer for this Murktide. We have four Plowshares, four sorts of Plowshares in our remaining 34 cards. So it would be kind of nice to find one of those. I suppose there's also a world right now where I, like, Doomsday into Shouldred, but I don't think I can race the One Ring even, or the, the Murktide that way. I guess I could doomsday and find plow. Oh, jeez. Seriously? Um, okay, I think I'm going to fire off some dark rituals here. Um, and I'm going to cast Lorien Revealed. This way we still have mana to Bowmasters, or like if we find another the One Ring. We find plow. Okay. So they have cast two force of wills this is pretty important um maybe it's important enough that i ponder looking for a veil of summer or a or a force of will we find force of will and children yes please okay so let's plow the big guy and it's gone i'm gonna i'm gonna hang on to the bowmasters i know it's like tempting to use the mana while we have it. Okay, and they're passing, and we take two damage, and now the game should effectively end. Um, now, decking becomes a concern, but we have the spare Doomsday, hilariously. Uh, let's, they had paid like this. Uncounterable, shoulder it coming out through the cavern. Let's draw some cards, gain some life. Yes, please. I got the whole world. You know, that song. So I'm going to discard a Doomsday... Oh, sorry, a Dark Ritual here. And let's pass. They are 24 life, which is a bit. But uh, we have... We have a lot here. Let's play the land. Let's attack. And I think we don't draw any more cards for the time being. I think we also get the uh, the Bowmasters down now. We can answer their Bowmasters with a Plow or one of the Forces. Just speed up the clock here. So let's cast Bowmasters. I take some damage, but then I gain some life. We draw Carpet. That's not really going to do anything anymore. So they're at 9, about to go to 7, and that means they're dead next turn if they don't do something about the current state of affairs. Alright, I'm just going to move to combat here, make them either dead or make the first move. Their pain costs. What's this? A murderer's cut on Shouldred. So I think I'm going to draw some cards. I'd love to find Veil vale Summer here, which I do. So why don't we just Veil? Vale? This ought to prompt the concession. I would assume. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Wow, that felt good. Um, come from behind win against this, this tempo deck here. 
All right, off to round number four. Right on. Round four on the draw for the first time in this league. Uh, I'm going to keep. A number of things punishes us here, and we are a little bit clunky in this hand with, uh, like, three, quote-unquote, sort of bombs. Oh, mountain. This could could be trouble, but a dark ritual would be nice here. Dark ritual? Eh. LED. Okay, I'm going to cast a ponder here. I have to prepare for the possibility of like uh, a chalice or worst worst would be a blood moon obviously. Um Okay, I'm going to take the the Lorien revealed and then draw the delta that lets us I guess doomsday on turn 3. I'm not loving this. I don't know, maybe I should have shuffled. Like I expect something uh, terrible to happen to me here. There's a Cavern of Souls on human. Oh no. What's this? Hopefully it's an initiative creature and not a Magus of the Moon. Oh, Fable. Ah. Oh. Okay, well that at least put, uh, puts things off for a turn here. Um, so I'm going to fetch uh, another Underground Sea and then cast Brainstorm. And then we'll see where we go from there. Um, sadly, not really anywhere exciting. I can put away one of the Doomsdays. And um, probably the Veil of Summer. And then we'll fetch Lorien Revealed. Well, not fetch Lorien Revealed. You know, Island Cycle. All that stuff. Uh, really hope uh, we don't get like steamrolled by a... Uh, a chalice would be fine here, but like a, a moon effect is what I'm truly worried about. This cavern on un human. Okay, so they looted away a seasoned engineer, which tells me they have another one. Um, they could also have like Archon here. Um, so, oh, and they're just passing. That's really interesting. Okay, I would just so really very much love a... Uh, Love, 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 love. A um, a dark ritual here. I think I'm actually gonna get tundra. And then I'm gonna play to fairy probably if I don't find like something to to take me take. Th Ooh, I found dark ritual. I mean, I could obviously also um also just um cast doomsday. I could have done that anyways, right? Just fetch a C. Wow, so many. Really, really appealing options here. So what's the worst that could happen? It's still probably um, the um, the Magus of the Moon. Archon would be annoying, but not unbeatable. I'm just thinking if I'm supposed to... I could Dark Ritual out this the One Ring. I think I like that, actually. Dark Ritual out the One Ring, and then just win next turn kind of thing. Yeah, let's do that. So this Polluted Delta has to get another Underground Sea or the Bayou. Or I suppose I have a Misty Rainforest in my hand, so we could we could do that. So now I have to choose between do I play the LED here and p try and play a little bit around an Archon. But I don't think it really matters that much because like Doomsday is going to be our spell for next turn anyways. All right, yeah, let's just pass here. I suppose like Chalice for zero could be a thing they could they could do here. All right, so they're gonna attack to get their treasure. They're choked on mana over there, which has been fortunate for you. But now they have four mana. I would expect a like since they looted away a seasoned engineer, I would kind of expect another one or a Caves of Chaos Adventurer, that type of deal. Yeah. All right. Well, this is good. I pretty feel pretty confident. Uh, we're about to win now. Yeah, turn f when the initiative deck plays their first initiative creature on turn four and hasn't played a lock piece before then, I think it's safe to say the deck has not been sort of operating um, on on all cylinders here. And we just, like, we have so much right now because of the, uh, the one ring and the LED and the street wraith. Um, so we made our land drop. We can just the one ring into Thassa uh, pedal and then have a force underneath for, or I guess on top probably that would be safest 
to to cycle into the, with a Street Wraith. That way we have two cards in the deck. That does sort of unnecessarily, I think, lose to something like double removal, or even a... No, double. it would have to be double removal. What we could also just do is just cycle through everything and then like put, put more Street Wraiths and Edge of Autumn, right? So Ring draws two, Street, street Wraith draws one, and then the other two cyclers can draw the last two. So Pile would then be uh, Thassa, Petal, uh, Cycle, Cycle. What am I missing? I guess we can still do the, fo the Force of Will thing then. And we don't need to... We don't need to uh, sack LED. I just want to make sure I'm getting this. So Street Wraith draws Force of Will. The One Ring draws... Um, let's say Edge of Autumn, second Street Wraith, and the two street, the two cyclers then draw into Thassa plus Lotus Petal. That lets us win with Force backup. So that's pretty appealing. Um, and they don't have anything. I didn't, didn't slip a Charles or zero uh, in there under my nose. Nah. All right. So Petal and Thassa are the bottom cards. Let's cycle here, or not cycle, activate ring, I mean. And if they do something, I can then cycle the Street Wraith in response. But that turned out not to be necessary. And let's get the pedal, and then hopefully we win. Not sure what they could have here. That beats a Force of Will, game one. Like, they would have to have two things that also beat an empty library. I don't think they, they play anything like that yeah all right cool so sideboard wise this is where the the force of negation and the two dismembers come in and i would say probably also Boseju can come in i think maybe one plow let's say this is five cards do we have things to board out i would say certainly the veil of summer can come out i think um I think actually the Sheldog Isle can come out. I don't think that's for this matchup. And I think we still want to be just fast, so have all the fast elements. Maybe Teferi isn't that exciting. And then the question becomes, do we want like a Shieldred just to maybe be able to pivot off of that if they are like on an Ancient Tomb line and we get to play some creature removal and then just resolve Shieldred? I think I, I'm, I'm not completely opposed to that. And then the question is, is the second shoulder better than the, the first Teferi? Maybe also, like, Daze is not that good. Uh, like, Counter Magic, as you just saw with the Counter Souls, is a little bit suspect anyways. But we need we need things to, to fight over their, their, like, lock pieces. And some of them may not be uh, able to come through the cavern. Okay, going to keep this hand. Opponent also kept seven. This answers uh, the resolved Magus. So, looking for a blue card for the Force, though, would be kind of nice. Well, there is that. And so, I think I'm going to cycle the Street Wraith here. Our life total is going to come under a little bit of pressure, probably. But, okay. So, Tropical Island here. I do kind of want this Lauren Reveal to be uh, like an underground sea. Okay, there's Chrome Mox. They might do a a Cavern of Souls now. Yep. So what's this? Solitude. Okay. Human. Okay, is this Caves of Chaos Adventurer? I can't counter it. Yep, that's fine. I mean, that can still be dismembered. It can also be plowed. Something, one of those things have to happen here. Uh, and it probably needs to be the plow, but that means getting Tundra here. Oh, man. Dark Ritual, again, would probably be the best draw. The One Ring. Okay, I'm gonna Island Cycle here and get uh, Tundra, which is pretty bad, but necessary. And I'm gonna plow this right now. I don't think they play, like, main deck rem like or not main deck, but, like, play stuff that's gonna kill my artifacts here, and I'm gonna play out the pedal at least. Alright, there's the planes. A uh, seasoned engineer, okay. Another initiative. Scary thing. Okay, and I lose five lives. They're just going for face here, and I'm gonna be under a ton of trouble. 
or in a ton of trouble. Oh, there's the dark ritual. So what what's best here? It's probably yeah, it's probably dark ritual, doomsday, and then dismember the the thing. Let's just make sure. So if I dismember now, I go to nine, and then I doomsday I go to four. If I doomsday I go to six, and then dismember and go to two. So it's better to dismember first. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put LED into play here. And first of all, I'm gonna hope they don't have uh, the thing. Yeah, I'm gonna put uh, LED into play. And then I'm going to cycle. I'll be at two. What's going to happen with this, uh, the initiative thing next turn? They were going to draw a card. Okay. So they have three cards in hand. So there's a line here that lets us just win with with LED um, uh, through a Magus of the Moon. So I don't think we have to worry about Magus as much. Not sure if... However, we can somehow, like, if we, we need to not take two life next turn because we need to cycle Street Wraith. And then I think Consider. The thing is, though, if they if they Chalice for one, this Consider line uh, gets bricked. But let's see. Let's see we go um, draw a Cycler, cycle, sack LED, cycle again, Consider binning the cavern and then draw thassa yeah because if they make a chalice for two we can just hold off for a turn okay so i'm gonna play out the led i think there's a higher risk of them going chalice for zero uh than them having something that removes led oh there was a pause here it might just be them looking over my deck it might also be that they have my break trap but my break trap was, was already on all right led is in pass the turn Okay, they get to draw a card. Another cavern here. Um, okay, human, 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 human. Okay, there's a thing here. They get to get to the throne of the dead. So I think what we need to not have happen here is that for them to hit Archon and really hope they, they hit uh, something else here, like a, a Magus of the Moon. Oh, there's an Archon. Oh, uh, they're going to take... No, they took the Magus of the Moon. Yay. Right, okay. So hopefully that means we get to win. They don't have red mana for a blast. Oh, no! Oh, shoot. Wait, do I still win? I think I still win, right? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, man. That's so bad. Uh... Yeah, okay. GG's. Yeah, I thought for a second, like, because I have the cavern, I could, uh, I could do it, but... Okay, so there is the touch of the spirit realm. So I don't play out this this LED, then I would have won. Oh man. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's hope we can do one better in, in game number three. All right, I will keep this, and I think probably I force of will a cavern of uh, well, cavern of souls, a um, a chrome box here. If if uh, if that happened to to come down. I think I shuffle these. I would really like the ponder, but I don't really want either of the other ones. Yeah, uh, Lauren reveal is fine. Chrome Mox. I am gonna, I am gonna force of negation this. If they just have another one, then it's you know really annoying. But um, I think like the the Chrome Mox into Cavern of Souls into creature that you can't do anything with is uh is scary. Okay, is this a chalice? Kind of hope it's a chalice. Yeah, okay. This hand can currently like get around chalice, and they only have one one land. But yeah, okay. All right, gonna pass here. We really, really wish this one ring was a uh, a blue card, um, because I need this Lorne revealed. There's a cavern. Human. Okay. Please. Oh. Yeah, this is fine. I'll go go off without artifacts. Okay, so they have a cavern on human, which means um, that we we have to put a dismember into the pile because we can't we 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 can't beat a uh, a magus of the moon. Something useful here would be great. Another land is not so great, uh, not so great at all actually. 
Okay, so so how about let's say we put edge of autumn um, Thassa. We need one of the dismembers. Could if if they go, we could have put okay. Hang on, we we put a basic island in here, and then like um, we draw. Let's say we draw this member, and then we, or rather, we draw a cycler. We draw the edge of autumn. And then we we play out our fetch land, and we fetch, and we cast the one ring. And if they make Magus of the Moon in between, then we just play the Misty Rainforest and tap four mountains, and, and make uh, the one ring. And then our yeah, I think I like that. There are some risks here. We can't draw with the one ring uh, once it comes into play because it's going to enter tap because of the our little friend here. I'm actually going to probably cycle a land before I I fetch just to have make sure I have the dis uh the dismember that is not my bottom card after I shuffle. This is just a pass. That would actually be very lovely. But probably is it isn't. It is. Wow, okay. Um so let's see I fetch here. I dr I I have three cards left. I play the one ring, then I draw a card. I have two cards left. And then ring and edge draws me one each. So I don't think I need to. I don't need to sacrifice the uh, the the land right now, to make sure I have the. Uh, so this is going to enter tapped. They could, a uh, touch of the spirit spirit realm it, um, but they would have to do that on. My next turn, I think. I don't don't remember if th maybe they can do it on their end of turn. I'm not sure. Okay, so now they just jumped a turn ahead on mana, but they're just passing. Wow, do they have something here that I am not thinking about that I'm going to lose to? They're attacking into the protection of the, the the ring. That type of thing. I suppose if I tap my ring... Uh, no, you you tap it, and then once it's the, the ability resolves, it's put a burden counter on it, then draw. I suppose they can touch it, touch of the spirit realm it then. And then it like blinks out. I don't get to draw. All right, something's happening here. Oh, a chalice on two. Just kills me, right? I don't. I don't think I built. I didn't put a cavern in there. So the pile is uh, dismember. Or did I? Let me just check my exile zone. I I kind of forget. No, there. The cavern is there. Yeah. Okay. My brain. My brain. My brain. Okay. So opponent is like. If they make a chalice for two, then that's fine. Okay, they're doing something here. It is a chalice for two, I think. No? Five mana. Oh, okay. So they exile this. Uh, yeah. I mean, that happens. What was exiled? Okay, so nothing. They just paid the, the iron price. Okay. So I think I I can afford to wait one turn here. Because like if I cycle Edge of Autumn into Thassa right now, and they have Solitude White card as their last two cards, then I lose. Plus I don't I don't think there's anything that deals me the amount of damage that I that I would 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 be taking here. If okay, what's this? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Well, I went from a what I thought was a an unlosable or not, a, but but a pretty likely win last game to lose. So let's see if the same thing happens here. They still have the two cards in hand. So I go down to six. I draw, and it's either going to be Thassa or Dismember. There is the Thassa. So I'm gonna cycle this and hope that they can't like. I could also hang on, hang on. Could they have two removal spells here? I don't think right. I don't think so. So I'm just gonna. Hang on to the edge of autumn. Actually, I don't know that there's any way they could make me draw a card off of my then empty library, but uh, I don't think I am sort of losing any percentages by doing it this way around. They can't plow, double plow, like even if they had to access to two mana. All right, we're four and oh, how about that? Beating Boris Initiative, cool. Be right back for round number five. Right on. On the play for round number five. Trophy match. Uh, yeah, let's go. Four out of five on the plays here. 
Whew. Well, do we do or do we not do? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to I'm gonna keep here and go for the... Well, I'm definitely going to keep, but I think I am going to go for the turn one unprotected Doomsday. I typically don't favor these sorts of plays all that much because it feels a little, little bit uh, unpleasant to not know what pile I'm building. Okay, there's capital F6 value from the opponent here. Everything is just resolving. Okay, gonna, that's going to probably mean it, it can be uh, a combo deck with no interaction, or it can be like a stompy type deck, uh, or just a non-blue deck without force of will that doesn't do anything. Um, so we have uh, Lorien Revealed that can get basic island, and we want Cavern of Souls in case they are a force of will deck that just doesn't have force of will right now, but is going to ponder on turn one and find a force of will. And we could put a pedal in there just to not lose to a uh, to a Magus of the Moon. I know I'm I'm like probably overestimating the uh, uh, sort of uh, commonality of Magus of the Moon in in game number ones, but it is just about trying to not lose. What we can't really comfortably beat here is another combo deck. Like we could put Force of Will on top, but Regardless, we're going to give them a turn, and they might just win. But let's um, let's see. So this pile here, it can ponder and then lore in revealed, or vice versa, and then draw like Edge of Autumn. That leaves the pile with. So let's say that we lore in, we draw for our, our turn. We draw Edge of Autumn. Then we. Um, Cycle Lorne revealed, get a get an island, then cast Ponder, draw the petal. We have Edge of Autumn, and we can we can then like win on the on the subsequent turn. I think that's okay. There's also the line where we just put Brainstorm on top here and make like a Brainstorm pile and sort of go with our read that our opponent is not a blue deck. But um, yeah, hopefully this this does the trick. Well, we shall see. So things I don't want to happen here. At, you know, aside from just losing to, like, Oops All Spells or uh, Reanimator. I guess Reanimator is not going to kill us on the same turn, but we are making a pass twice pile here, and I'm not going to beat, like, a resolved Gristlebrand or whatever. At least, probably not. Um, oh, this smells like Reanimator. Bloodstained Mire. Not in any fair deck. But at least it's not Wasteland. So if if they just discard us here and take one of the yeah they're gonna grief us here Dothy Voidwalker okay okay I'm I'm like if if as long as no fatty comes into play here I'm somewhat happy um but obviously they're gonna take one of the like either yeah they're gonna take the ponder they're gonna take one of the cards that we were planning on using and if they can reanimate here and take the Dothy or sorry the uh, the Lorne revealed um. Then that's a little bit annoying. Let's see exactly how annoying it is, and how well I remember how I stack the pile. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna draw Edge of Autumn here. So what we can't do is we can't play around a removal spell. So if they are like on Snuff Out or something, which I don't, yeah, I hope so, but I don't think that's very common. We also have to hope they're not like on Wasteland. I don't think that's very typical for this type of deck, but we shall see. Thoughtsies, huh? Hmm. I can't, honestly, I, uh... Okay, so through the magic of movie making, I took a break between <laughs> round four and five. Uh, like a long break, and we had company, and I had a little bit of wine to drink. So I'm a little bit tipsy right now, which I'm just saying as an excuse for not, you know, being thorough. So I can't actually remember how I stacked the pile as I was expecting to, uh, to cast Lord and Revealed. Um, I believe so i know island is on the bottom but i can't remember the order of the remaining three cards the only way it makes sense for me to edge of autumn right now is if it's cavern of souls that's on top of the deck and i think it might be lotus petal so let's see here if it's lotus petal so i go to six i draw lotus petal then i i have to hope it's uh it's thassa not on the like bottom but I, uh, 
yeah, I think I'm just going to have to let this resolve because I think it is Lotus Petal I'm drawing. And if I then, like, sack the island of the Underground Sea here to the edge of Autumn, draw Lotus Petal, then they discard the Lotus Petal, then I, I can't cast uh, Thassa's Oracle. So, we shall see. Come on, Lotus Petal. Oh, gosh. I think I've just lost, yeah. Because I wouldn't... I guess... I guess I probably knew that. I, I was thinking that Cavern might be the bottom card, and then Thassa, then uh, Lotus Petal. But, yeah. I'm going to have uh, a big fat... Uh... Oh, actually, hang on. Never mind. Oh, yeah, no, I can't. I was going to say, I could, like, play Teferi next turn. Like, assuming I'm, I'm remembering correctly now, and I draw the Lotus Petal now. <laughs> wow. All of this card. Um, I'm going to, like, draw Lotus Petal. And then I could play Cavern and Lotus Petal, and then bounce the Grief. But, if I bounce the Grief... What was exile here? If I bounce the Grief, then I draw the Thassa, and then they just re-Grief me on their next turn. But I mean, it still probably is, like, that's the only line I have. And then I have to hope the two black, the two cards in their hand, plus the, <laughs> the card on top of their deck, aren't aren't black, so they can't pitch uh, the Grief, which is almost, I would say, an impossibility because they're missing land drops here, so what they have in their hand is spells. And I don't know what, like, this seems like I'm on a black deck. Whoops. Just play out your cards. Okay, never mind. Yep, here comes Lotus Petal. Guess, um, guess this is what we're doing. Um, name wizard here yeah this was almost good like this line um, but unfortunately it's not going to be good but we are dead so this is the play we have to we, we can make so unfortunately we draw Thassa here and not the island because that's the way our life turned out and we have to pass and hope that for some reason they just are sitting on non-black cards like maybe like faithless lootings like, maybe this is somehow a red deck, and they just haven't been able to get... What's this? Two mana? Is this Bowmasters? No, it's nothing, right? They can't cast anything because of Teferi. Maybe they forgot. So, here's hoping that they somehow, like, have Grief, Bowmasters, and two non-black spells in their hand, and that they prioritize Bowmasters to kill Teferi. I can't imagine they would. But, uh... Entomb. Okay. What's this? Archon. Okay, that just kills me, sure. That works too. It both kills me and makes me discard Thassa, so yeah. Alright, so this is uh, that sort of kind of hybrid reanimator deck that plays uh, main deck Thothies and stuff, but is a reanimator deck. Um, so I think I definitely like a couple of plows here alongside my, my uh, Force of Negation. Um, I think I can stand cutting a little bit of the speed. Question is, would they be a Magus of the Moon deck? As per my usual concerns. I don't know. I'll cut a Lorna Reel. I, I don't think it's a Magus deck. It looks like it's mono black. Yeah, I don't know. All that discard kind of screwed me over. But that is, like, I don't know. I don't want to be too results biased, but... I mean, so suppose I don't Doomsday on turn one. Then they just shred my hand. I ponder instead. Like, I don't know. I, 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 nah, I still think I'm probably okay with, with how that play went. Um, um, this is... I think it's a mulligan. It's close, though. Yeah, I'll keep this. And I think I will ship the Sheldog Isle. Opponent is on six as well. Alright. So I'm going to... Float the Delta at least makes make them think about Veil. I'm not sure if they look through my deck, but um, I didn't show them any green, I don't think, uh, last game. Ooh, red mana. Dark Ritual, huh? Okay. I mean, this is... I'm going to force will this. Hope they don't have another Entomb. Okay, that was good. That was about as favorable of an exchange as I could hope for here, a two for two. Um, hmm. So I could play Edge of Autumn actually play it to mana ramp, but I don't think I actually need that because of my the Dark Ritual. If I had, instead of Dark Ritual, I had um, 
like the one ring in my hand, I would certainly do that. Ursa Saga, wow, that's interesting. Okay, cool, cool. They're passing. They could have Orcish Bowmasters here, we we have to remember, and I'm just, ugh. Yeah, it's annoying. Like, drawing Doomsday here obviously cracks his hand. I think drawing the One Ring would also be really good. But they are a Saga deck now, apparently, so maybe they have Pithing Needle? I don't know. I am concerned about Pithing Needle. They're incentivized to pass here, right? If they want to get a Construct out of their uh, their Saga. They pause, though, so maybe they also have something they, they would like to play. Oh, come on. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna cast the uh, Thassa here. And she can, like, get in front of stuff. Unless they play Dothy, then I'm also not too concerned about, like, her dying. If she dies and they reanimate her, that means we have to jump through the hoop of putting a Teferi in our pile and bouncing the Thassa to her own hand. But, um, yep, I'll take the Doomsday. Let's see here. So we have, uh, with the Petal and the Dark Ritual, we have six mana. So we could, um, could, like, ritual out the Doomsday, and then we could, um, play Teferi. So hang on, why? Why wouldn't you, why didn't they make a, uh, a construct? They forget? We're on their turn now. Okay, that's interesting. So this is a red deck, and now they could have, uh, Magus of the Moon, meaning that I am... Worried about that, obviously. I can. S okay. Tracks that was exiled. Okay, interesting. Dothy, huh? Well, sure. So if if they can now kill my my Thassa, I don't have a win condition. I don't know if they would play something like Red Blast. I don't think you typically see that. Okay. So. Hmm. So we dark ritual off of Bayou. Cast Doomsday. Then we then we cycle Edge of Autumn. Or do we? I think we have to probably wait a turn. And then just, just have like um, Teferi as the top de uh, card of the deck. Probably. And if that's the case, maybe we don't even like uh, cast a Dark Ritual. I'm going to just cast Doomsday here. Because that's the line we have. Um, yeah, I think we just have to hope to not get wrecked. So I'm going to play the pedal. I'm going to expect them to not be able to remove a pedal. So let's say we, we draw to Fairy. We tap Bayou Underground Sea Pedal. We bounce Thassa. We draw um, something. Um, we can even like make it a fetch land. Not that I think that will matter, but having access to the Tundra in case they actually do kill the Lotus Petal, meaning we can't click, like cast a fairy, that would be kind of nice. And do we want like an extra Petal and like a Plow in case somehow like Magus of the Moon makes uh, its appearance here? Probably not, right? Maybe by the, you know, then it's 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 maybe better to just have like no, I was I was gonna say like. Uh, LED, but like Thassa is going to be in her hand. Okay, so let's see here. We draw to Fairy. We play him and bounce Thassa, drawing Misty Rainforest, and we fetch Tundra. Okay, let's try that. This will all be a complete sort of academical uh, or academic test uh, or exercise if it turns out that they actually have. Um, some way to fight to kill uh, Thassa, I mean. So nothing, I think, has a void counter on it except for the Doomsday. So they can cast a Doomsday with their... Yeah, and I could attack here. Like, I could attack because they can't block, and I'm not blocking, so maybe I should have done that, but I, this game is not going to come down to my opponent's life total. Four cards in hand. I hope this is just discard. Yeah, all right. I don't care about the... Oh, no! No! Oh, uh, okay. Damn. They just had it. Yeah, I can't beat this. I thought that's going to go into the void. Yeah. Oh! 
oh, so close to the trophy, or maybe not, but like 4-0 into 5-1, or into 4-1 is always a little bit of a, of a downer. All right, um, 4-1, generally really happy with how this league went. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes you lose to Reanimator. Um, I think we had some good matches, some some kind of weird matches, the round one uh, against the, I'm not even sure what to call it, the Beseech uh, Echo deck was um, was a little bit wonky, but um, but I think uh, all in all, the deck performed. I'm, I'm really stoked about this, uh, how this list is panning out. I'm like, in the last five leagues, I'm like two trophies, one, three, two, and two, four ones. So that's like, I, I feel like the deck is performing and I'm sort of getting into the groove of playing it a bit better than I perhaps was um, at the outset. So I think all in all, the Shell Dog Isle, didn't, it didn't really come up. I'm, just, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to continue the research, so to speak. Um, I think the plan worked pretty well against the, the tempo deck I played. Um, and what else did we face? Yeah, I'm suddenly, I, I like, I, I went from losing, like, all the time when I faced Goblins to now having won the last four or five uh, matchups versus Goblins, which I'm really happy about, and I also think that that's, I, I, I seem to have to sometimes struggle versus new decks that I'm not used to playing against. I've, I've sort of, I've, I've been seeing a pattern where I, I tend to lose a lot at the beginning and then fe feel like the sky's falling and, like, uh, feel like a matchup is really bad and then once I, I start getting more reps uh it usually gets a bit better and that certainly feels that way uh with the goblins matchup but I'm obviously all this is said with not that many reps in still I'm like at 160 something matches with this deck so but I think that's going to be it for me thanks so much for watching I hope you had a good time I hope you liked it and I'll be back with some more uh legacy and maybe vintage yeah see you around